I 100% agree if you're listening and you're plateaued or you're stalling or you're, you're not seeing the results that you expected, then I think this is a for sure tip. Yeah. It does make a difference because when I put my phone, I did this literally, I did this all week last week. I, I put my phone in my pocket or I put it on the floor next to my water bottle in the gym and I said, I'm not going to touch it. And boy, by the way, is that hard. It's like so it's addicting. I want to grab my phone in yeah. between every set. What do I do while I'm resting? Uh. Yeah. So instead I just kept it there and I just, my mind was on the workout. It was like, do I feel it in the right place? Let me tweak this a little bit with my technique. I could have squeezed a little harder at the top of that rep. And I it just, it's a better quality. So I can only imagine somebody who's not as experienced as I am how much of a difference it'll make uh, with their technique, their form, and just the connection that they feel to work out. Hey, real quick, sorry to interrupt. Here's the giveaway for today's episode, MAPS Aesthetic. This is a bodybuilder type MAPS program, and you can get it for free. You just got to do the following. Leave a comment below in the first 24 hours that we drop this episode. Subscribe to this channel uh, and turn on notifications. Do all those things, and if we like your comment, we'll notify you, and you'll get free access to MAPS Aesthetic. Also, you got to check out our new mind pump clips channel if you want short clips that communicate excellent fitness information mind pump clicks it's a brand new uh, clip sorry it's a brand new channel go check it out one more thing we're running a sale this month the starter bundle is 50 percent off so that's maps anabolic maps prime and the intuitive nutrition guide and then maps split this is the advanced bodybuilder style workout program is also 50% off. So if you're interested in either one of those, go to mapsfitnessproducts.com and then use the code MAYSPECIAL for that discount. All right, here comes the show. Here's an easy way to increase the effectiveness of your workout. Put your phone down. Stay focused on what you're doing. You know, I did this the other day, right? I have this habit in between sets where I pick up my phone, mm. work, yeah. read emails, write or whatever. And the other day I'm like, you know what? I'm going to not touch my phone at all. Mm. and I had a way better workout. My rest periods were consistent. I got better. I got more focused in the workout, got a better pump. And, I mean, that's how we all worked out when we were younger. I didn't have – we didn't have phones back then. I'm, we just, we just, sound like everybody's dad. I just, you I know, know, put your phone down. It's I'm, true. I'm, I'm it torn. is true. I'm, I'm not, torn. I'm torn a little bit on this one because I I train like that a lot right now. I definitely yeah. do. I totally multitask and – so I think well, if, we need you to do our investments. So you keep doing that. <laughs> yes, <laughs> it's, it's, it's not worth it. Yeah, yeah, I'm not making gains, but we're making money. <laughs> yeah, it's all right, dude. <laughs> no, really though. So I 100% agree. If you're listening and you're plateaued or you're stalling or you're you're not seeing the results that you expected, then I think this is a for sure tip. Yeah. Um, I know that I'm not making major gains right now or progress. It's more like I'm touching touching weight to stay in shape or mm -hmm. stay fit. That's kind of like my attitude right now. So I, I enjoy that kind of like in and out of, of being on my phone and then going back. But if I was trying to make progress, I 100% agree. Like I would, and I do that with, when, when I'm on those, those kicks where I'm like, okay, I need to make moves now. It's like, I go mm -hmm. put it away from me. Cause if it's even anywhere near me, it's so tempting. Well, you know, it's more break. effective you are though. Like, yeah, when you're, when I'll listen to music and so I'll have that ahead of time. So I'm like, okay, I'll have my phone, but I, when I'm not on there, like getting distracted at all. And I'm just thinking about what I'm actually doing. And I'm like literally there focused on working out. It's, it makes such a massive difference. It does. And people think, well, what's the difference if you do the set and you, you maybe you have a timer for your rest period. Well, first off, I definitely, my rest periods are more consistent, but second, taking your focus off the workout and then going back on the workout. Now, I've been doing this a long time, so I'm, I can do that better than most. But it does make a difference because when I put my phone – I did this literally. I did this all week last week. I, I put my phone in my pocket or I put it on the floor next to my water bottle in the gym. And I said, I'm not going to touch it. And boy, by the way, is that hard. It's like so – it's addicting. I want to grab my phone in yeah. between every set. What do I do while I'm resting? Uh. Yeah. So instead, I just kept it there and I just – my mind was on the workout. It was like – do I feel it in the right place? Let me tweak this a little bit with my technique. I could have squeezed a little harder at the top of that rep. And I just, it's a better quality. So I can only imagine somebody who's not as experienced as I am, how much of a difference it'll make uh, with their technique, their form, and just the connection that they feel to work out, you know? Can I tell you guys something? Uh oh, what do you got? 
I don't like this studio anymore. No. <laughs> <laughs> I don't. I know. Oh, you're going look... to call out the obvious right oh, now? I don't like it at all, dude. It sucks now. This is our travel studio. It's, it's so sucks. bright. Uh, you guys look hella ugly now. Oh. <laughs> yeah. I'm not going to. That's not mean. Gonna, yeah. Which means I know I do too. You know what yeah. I'm saying? It's like, <laughs> it's a uh, light. I don't think you're wrong is what I'm trying to say. Uh, yeah. It's so yeah. blah. Yeah. I know we, I mean, so this is it's our. It's due for a fresh up. This is our studio that we have away from the main studio. It's when we do Was like. Doug call it the East? Is yes, it, it's my East. Puppies. My, my puppies. puppies. Studio. East. We come up here. For people who don't know, we come up here when we're gonna like do a lot of work all day, whether it's create a program, uh, or you know figure out some new plan or whatever. And so we built a studio so we didn't have to worry about recording, and it's smaller, and we didn't optimize it for visual so it's just <laughs> <laughs> well that's it's a little we, throwback now when guys. we first did it though i actually liked it more than the other one because because the red stripe we positioned the new light the red stripe <laughs> remember really we debated this off, was, was hey so... do you guys remember that the debate <laughs> i was like why do we got a red stripe going across the side <laughs> adam's like no, it makes it look fast <laughs> yeah, yeah. Okay. break it up a little yeah, bit yeah that's you know, true and stripes it's the most decorative that's part true. of it now so no it's, i just i don't like it anymore i know we don't have all the all the cool I stuff i like that it's more spiky i'll Doug, give it that hey our most viewed I don't know if it's still true. Adam, you're, you're the most in touch with our analytics. It's Are our top viewed videos still the ones from the studio? It's up. The, the, the one where my beard is long. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, where I look like I was like 20 more pounds because I'm like slushed over. <laughs> Bro, I look like, Doug, I look like a Sal's, werewolf. Sal's all skinny and overgrown, dude. He looks, he I, look like like a, a, I look like a homeless guy. He does look homeless. <laughs> he did, like a homeless werewolf. <laughs> like, I didn't get a haircut for a long time. <laughs> my beard was so long. It was terrible. Today I did an interview. I was on uh, Jordan Sh uh, Syed's podcast. Shout out to him. Great trip. Trainer. I loved it. And uh, yeah. I didn't real. I didn't even pay attention. I had on my Adidas. I have this Adidas, like, uh, I don't know what you call it, like jumper suit, like jacket thing or whatever. And yeah, it's got the yeah, red track jacket. Yeah, there you go. Yeah. And, I'm, I'm, and I could see myself on the screen because it's virtual. And I'm like, I, I, I matched the walls. <laughs> oh, I joined. I didn't plan this, bro. I look the Can same. You see me? Yeah. I know, dude. Camouflage. <laughs> it was hella funny. Yeah. Dude, you guys, uh, I messed up the other day. And I'm going to bring this up, even though you guys are going to razz me for this. For, uh, Jessica's Mother's Day. Oh, how? Well, you at least remembered it, this right? This is the best ever, dude. Dude. <laughs> so bad. So is this all like just last minute decision making? No. That, that screwed no, that's up? that's what makes it even worse, dude. I I like two weeks before, I booked flowers for Jessica to get there on Mother's Day. Yeah. And we're having a baby girl, because that's what we know we have. We have the name picked out already. I hope she doesn't get mad, but uh Dahlia is the name that we want for this girl. So I'm like, Dahlia's. And the reason why we picked the name is both of us like Dahlia's, and we also like the way it looks with the H and everything. It looks really cool. So I'm like, Dahlia's, it'll come from my son, Aurelius. So it'll be like, hey, mommy, happy Mother's Day, whatever. First of all, it doesn't even get there on Mother's Day. It's delayed, so it gets to the night after, and it's fake flowers. <laughs> <laughs> They're not even real. <laughs> no, dude, it's fake flowers. Did, did you just not read that part on the website, or yeah, did no. they? Dude, I have the worst. It's like my love stuff. for you, honey. It's forever. Yeah, that's yes, it. Dude. Just put the spin on it. They you don't know, die. The, the irony of this story was when I asked him, I'm like, really? Did you, our flower place was like that? He goes, No, I didn't even use our flower. I'm like, We're sponsored by a flower company, I know. and this fool uses somebody else's company. <laughs> I'm back, so I'm yeah. so serves you right, yeah, dude. Yeah, I know it is kind of karma. Right? I went, so I went back to from you flowers, and I'm gonna have. May, hopefully, this episode doesn't come out um, before she gets them, but we're, I'm gonna get her some really nice, real dahlias. <laughs> Not that it's a freaking. It's so. It, by the way, I don't remember the picture looking like this. It's like a box with fake flowers and a candle. It looks like something you would see at. Your grandma's house. I'm surprised oh, you couldn't man. tell on the on the on the website. No, oh, I don't know, dude. I've been under a lot of stress. <laughs> <laughs> There's been a lot of stuff going on, bro. Well, all My you gotta do is spent. dust them, and then they're there. You know, yeah. like you can keep. She them was in a the good house. sport about it. I heard you on the phone with her, so she was a good sport about it. Yeah, you she's a good it. sport. If she she knows that the, you know, I was really trying. You know. But I mean the fact that you did the whole like all Mother's Day is flower anyway. name thing like yeah. I mean I think that redeems it like the fact because it wasn't if it was just like random like roses or something like that and it was fake <laughs> and they were late <laughs> so bad that would dude. be really really bad mm -hmm. but the fact that you even sought out those specific flowers feels like okay well he yeah. he definitely put some dude, effort into dude it. so so on that topic you know how weird yeah. this is right when Jessica and I first met it was like it was like we were mag <clears throat> it was magnetic right it was super attractive whatever and so. When you first meet someone, you fall that way. You share everything. We had this conversation early on in our relationship where we said, you know, hey, what are your favorite names for 
for like girls if you ever had another kid. Oh my God. You were Both talking about of us, that early? It was all kinds of stuff we You're talked about. You're still that guy. I know, bro. <laughs> no, hey, bro, I felt hard, bro. So, <laughs> like, like day two. Hey, what would you want to name We're just sitting yeah. cross leg, just yeah. like, you know, just like talking. <laughs> just facing, holding hands, facing yeah, each other. Exactly. Oh like, oh but it's cool. Keep going. 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 And I like the way I like it because of the way it looks. D A H L I A. So has she. Now I didn't name my daughter, my older daughter Dahlia, because it's not really an Italian name. And my ex-wife was Italian, so it was like off the table. Hmm. But it was always a name that I liked ever since I was a kid. Same for her. How weird is that? So we both had this name. Then she got pregnant with Aurelius. It was a boy, so we didn't get to use it. And then this one was unplanned. So she got, and I was like, oh crap, I wonder if it's going to be a girl. Mm. How weird is that? Yeah. yeah. It was meant to be. That's crazy. Well, that was kind of like if we had a girl, we were going to call like Ava Jean because like both of our grandmas, like it's their names combined. And I, I love was like, that name, dude. That sounds so like rockabilly. That's so, you know? rock. Like, That's was, so rock. I like that. I would have been all about it, but you know. It's all good. Pass it on to some. Maybe maybe one of my kids will use it. You, you still know, have time to well, nah, s- I'm, I'm done, bro. Uh, <laughs> I'm done. Since we're admitting uh, mistakes, I bro, I fucked up bad this last week. So I after after having the flu, I'm sick, right? And also, I've talked about how I'm coming off the caffeine and kratom and stuff. So, you know, I went from like 700 milligrams all the way down to like a cup, my just one cup of coffee. But there's been a couple of days where like the headaches have been so bad that I'm like, I need to at least get another cup of coffee mm-hmm. just to like get rid of this because they're like coming on like migraines. So I was having one of those days and I was driving home from the studio and I, I pulled into just like a Starbucks really quick. And you know how the Starbucks driveways, they're, they're always like these like narrow, tight little whiny things. And I'm like, oh, that, that turn goes real they're, hard. They're always hard. To With the low curb? Bro. Oh, no. So I'm I'm in I'm in the the powder powder coated red rims. Oh, you just got yeah, you those, got those dude. done, dude. No, you didn't. I curbed the fuck <laughs> no! out of those wheels. I curbed them. There. That's it, negative ten man pro. It no, was the wor- it was the worst curb job I've ever done in my life, dude. On at least it wasn't a rim job. So. <laughs> <laughs> this is weird. This close. You did a rim. You got a good, yeah. Wow, look at that rim job, that, hey. dude. That is for oh, a, for a man. Any dude. guy listening right now watching this, bro. When I no. brought it in, the guy yeah. even asked you, "Oh, did your wife do this?" Yes. <laughs> did you lie? <laughs> I thought I would roll her right under the bus. I almost I almost rolled her under the bus, and then like, <laughs> but I felt such, like such an ass. I'm like, oh no. That bro, is the most for a guy. That's uh, the most embarrassing uh, thing. Like, it okay. is. So you guys know that I did that to my rims a while ago too, right? Well, I was at the mall. And they have in the parking lot. It was so stupid. These low ass curbs. And I hit it, and I I heard, and just immediately anger inside. And Ugh. Jessica knows. Like she's like quiet, and everybody's quiet. The kids are quiet in the car. Yeah. And I was pissed. But to add, and she was trying to be you know nice. To add insult to injury, Jessica goes, you know, when you take it into the dealership, just tell them I did it. You know, I'm like, <laughs> that's even worse, yeah. babe. Like, I'm gonna this. own this. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> oh. Oh, uh, they can fix them pretty good though. Yeah, yeah. No, I know they can do a good job. I don't know what it's going to cost me or what about that, but the, it would... wasn't that expensive for mine. Oh, really? It was a couple hundred bucks. I don't know if it'll be more. Yours are like alloy rims. You right? got to you got to color them. Well, again. Yeah, you got to yeah. paint them again. Yeah, so the, they'll have to strip the paint and then they'll have to probably buff it out and then they'll have. How to bad is it? Is it like, bro? It's, that makes my stomach. I'll hurt send a the. Bit. I'll send this. Andrew's doing this, right? We're sending this over to Andrew today. Yes. Don't let me forget. I'll send. I took a picture, obviously, because I sent it in and like told the guy. I was like, bro, I, I got to get you to fix these right here. Oh, that's the worst sound too when you're driving you hear it was <laughs> it was bad like it, it i mean i would i was going i was going enough speed that it wasn't like i went you know and then stopped yeah. it was like oh <laughs> i mean it took like i mean like, I, I can't get back out of it at that point it's oh. like the same right so oh. you gotta keep and, going you know, and then i'm like still in the line and i'm waiting right and then we get my coffee. oh so it's before you got your coffee yeah so, <laughs> so i'm just like i haven't so you seen, have to sit oh, there i gotta sit there and just wait and then i'm like oh dude i get it right away i get the coffee Did anybody see it yeah no, i don't think anyone else saw it I don't that would have been a that's the worst is if you get some like mechanic kind of guy that comes over like oh my god hey yeah and then like tells you all the details of what you did wrong yeah, well, like, the worst. Take a I, thanks. I'm glad you're here. You're not used to this kind it's of car. So, I'm, yeah. <laughs> the worst part, too. And Katrina was like, "Oh my god!" She was like, "I can't believe you did that." Because I'm when she's driving. Ever if you, are you like don't? Yes. Yeah. yeah. I'm always. Like, I'll park it. You know, so I'll park it. You know, so like, I don't want you to curb the wheels. Yeah. I want you to curb the wheels. <laughs> you're like, talk Listen, all that babe, shit. I, not, I know oh, what I'm doing. Dude. And the worst part about it is these cars have hella sensors too, so you can like <laughs> cameras and shit. So it's like, yeah. 
Like, that's uh, the it worst. It ruined my day for sure. Dude. I mean, it was already bad enough. I got a headache, and that's why I'm in there. And then that just was like to top it off. Bro, there's, the only thing, and again, I did the same thing. The only thing worse than that would be if, if you were startled next to your wife and you had a high-pitched scream. There's nothing. That would be the worst. That would be worse. <laughs> Besides that, you know what I mean? Ah! You know what I mean? Yeah, like oh a spider God. just comes up. Yeah. Ah! Yeah. Oh. I definitely I was by myself in the car I definitely was like cussing yeah. and swearing. give me your man was, card right I was, now I mean there was it was like it was one of those ones that was so bad too that like there's been times where I've like hit something and you kind of hear it and you're like oh maybe it's not so bad it's like maybe a little nick or it's not too bad you know it's like it was like there was I'm like, I'm like praying going like maybe maybe yeah. just me I was like no this is bad what is it about that like that you just feel so unmanly when you do something wrong in a car you know what I mean is it just because we're expected yeah. like I remember when I was at, when I look was... at you for all the answers dude and you're like then you're just like revealing how much you don't know yeah it's true <laughs> <laughs> I admit it with the with stuff in the house oh, no, I don't, I don't admit it I've, that's that's a, a you know domain dude, I'm trying I, to keep I, that illusion I remember once I was working with my dad and he's like hey can you back up the, the work van up into this thing whatever and I just I couldn't back it up right, and uh, all and the workers were watching me, oh, a bunch you, of dudes. You never backed up a trailer. Backing up a trailer takes some skill. It, sucks. it does, yeah, yeah. yeah. Especially it does. if it's a small trailer. The smaller the trailer, the more diff- the more yeah. difficult that is. Yeah, for sure. yeah. No, I had like his workers watching me, and I'm like 17 <laughs> years old, you know, and I'm trying to do it. Oh, and no. then, yeah, and then finally my dad comes over and he's like telling me what to do, you know. And I'm like, oh, bro, <laughs> take me home. I'm gonna go home right now. <laughs> this is embarrassing. There are things like that, right? Yeah. I mean, is, I don't know. I don't, is it a sexist to say that shit or not? But there's certain there's certain things like as a guy that like you just you're just supposed to know how you're to do just it. supposed to be able to do it yeah, yeah it it's works expected it's true and it works in the reverse like when i'm like if i'm at the park with the kids just because i'm at the park with my kids by myself i've had people come up to me like you're such a good dad i'm like on my phone you know they're playing <laughs> just because yeah. you're there yeah, with like the way kids. way different expectations you know what i mean yeah I have, oh. yeah I have like friends like they're you know they're divorced or whatever and the dad shows up every once in a while play yeah he's, he's, he's a good yeah, dad. you push a stroller around yeah. you're so amazing. he shows up twice a week you know what i mean man we got low standards you do so much <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah oh my god you're here you got a good husband i saw him wash dishes one time yeah. you know what i mean it's like whatever he didn't even leave yeah yeah anyway, he's dude. still here hey so uh pat ourselves on the back we we apparently the launch of the new green juice flavor crushed oh, yeah, with Organifi. Yeah, yeah. Oh, yeah. Yeah. So, yeah. So I think we either pr- well, presented it well. Awesome fans, of course. Yeah. No, yeah. I think the flavor's crushing. It is. Yeah. It's, I love it. That's really good. It tastes really good. Yeah. I don't know what magic they do with their stuff. Because even the regular green juice is incredible. It was already amazing. Yeah. It's, but the, it's super refreshing. Dude. The, it was a crisp apple, right? Did I say it right? Yeah. I don't always say apple crisp. It's crisp apple. Really, really good. <clears throat> and they gave us our report. We get reports from our sponsors, and they'll tell us, uh, you know, how our fans like a product or not, or what's going on. And that one just it, it's it's like what is it like triple? Yeah, triple what normal response? Yeah. No, it flew off the shelves for sure. You know, speaking of them, I'm glad you brought them up. This is all personal. I get whatever we'll have it on the podcast. Where are we at with um, you working with them? Uh, the last the formulation that you were doing is yeah, that, no, is it's postponed. No, is no, that, no, 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 no. We're gonna, yeah, mm-hmm. okay. Yeah, I can't talk about what it is though. Yeah, no, I know you can't talk about it, but I, I, I knew yeah. that I, there was rumors that uh, that um, the, the girl that was helping, I'm not going to say her name because I don't want to roll her under the bus if she can't be, if we can't talk about her or not, but that was working, you were working with was originally going to leave and then she decided she stayed. Yeah. She stayed yeah. And so I didn't know if you, like that project got lost in between that. Yeah, or no, 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 it's all going. Oh, okay. Yeah, it's going good and, and we're working on a formulation together, which, you know, it's interesting. I obviously uh, being ignorant to the process, I've never worked in a supplement Isn't company. Isn't this like Sal's dream he's living right now? Oh, bro. Yeah. Yeah. Well, almost. You get to tell I'm so glad he's doing it, though, I've not wanted supplements. to do it for so long. And yeah. I, it's because it's a headache. It but is. didn't you used to do that, like, oh, way own? back in the day? Yeah, you just, like, order them all individually, each ingredient, oh, and yeah. then you know put time, them together. You know how many times I almost died? Yeah, no, I'm serious, <laughs> yeah. dude. I combined, when I was a kid, and I, I figured out supplements, or I should say I my addiction to supplements first started, I bought chemistry uh, books and I learned about combining certain ingredients. Where, and I combined a bunch of stimulants uh, one time, and it was bad, dude. I went. I remember I went to the gym. I was twenty four hour fitness. I was I don't know six, before I even became a trainer. So I was like sixteen, seventeen, yeah. and I worked out for like two and a half hours, like an idiot, like a maniac. I remember being like, "This is amazing! I've discovered that!" And, I'm, <laughs> and then I came home. 
and it was like nine o'clock at night and until maybe 3 a.m i was laying in my bed i'll never staring forget staring at the ceiling bro. oh and my heart was like do 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 and i remember like Ugh. thinking like oh my poor mom's gonna find me dead and you know when she comes oh in here in the God. morning <laughs> nothing is more sc- i've had that one time when i was driving home and i probably drank like i think it was like one and a half speed stacks. You know, this is when I was working for Adam, naturally. <laughs> and I was... <laughs> <laughs> it was close out. You know, yeah, I'm just... She was way off. more productive, though, let me tell you. <laughs> hey, number one in the company. That was the secret. <laughs> they don't lie. You know, Broke you know, a lot of records in, those Proofs days. in the pudding. <laughs> yeah, I was driving home, and I was like... <gasps> and I just... The, the sweat, and then, like, you just, you just felt like you could never catch your breath completely, and it was just like... Uh, it, oh, dude, tight tightness there dude, dude i'm I like got, dude, i'm gonna have a heart attack i so so i my dad is hilarious right you guys know my uh, well you don't know my dad too well but you hear me tell stories he's like he's a great man he's one of you know, he's, he's my, obviously one of my uh my number one mentors and idols but he's also a kid he's also a big kid at heart and so if he, he'll try supplements out too so i got a call i remember i got a call from him in the middle of the night and i think it's because he didn't want to wake my mom up <laughs> and he goes so what i'm like oh, you're right what's going on he goes Look, uh, I uh, I drink, uh, I take a drink. I have so much energy. I have a great workout. And I already know it's like 2 o'clock in the morning. I'm like, oh, shit. I'm like, you can't sleep? <laughs> How do you feel right now? I don't feel good. What do I do? I said, well, just chill and see what happens or whatever. What did you drink? He's like, oh, I, th- I think it's called Yellow Jacket or something like that. Wow. <laughs> oh, <I remember laughs> just like yeah. the truck stops. Yeah, yeah. I've seen those, dude. Those. Yeah. And then he's like, he proceeds to tell me how he did the whole stack on the pec deck. Oh, but I do the whole stack on the. <laughs> he goes, the one where your arms come together. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> like, like, awesome. Now, if you, okay, r- real talk though, okay? So this, I've been in this situation. And it, okay, we're talking about really extreme situations, but I've even been in situations where, ah, oh, damn it, I drank it too late. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Or I had mm-hmm. a little too much. Yeah. And it, what would you, what supplements or what adaptogens would you take to try and mitigate that to like help you come down? Like, okay, you went too oh, far. Oh, after you went too far? Yeah, yeah you went too far. You don't yeah, yeah. Re- and then do, do you like take like a cold shower or something mm-hmm. to kind of. Like, no. that'd be too much yeah. stimulus yeah you gotta stay hydrated make sure you have enough electrolytes um, if you really feel scared you definitely should go to a hospital uh, but you could try chamomile uh, tea you could try what about like the mushrooms and stuff like that any adaptogens like that yeah I mean it's not gonna be acute enough to make a big difference oh really yeah and you gotta be careful of combining the wrong things so I would go mild like chamomile and what's weird is this paradoxical opposite effect Sometimes if you go too crazy on stimulants where yeah. you take something that you think is going to bring you down and it actually brings you up. So really the best thing you could do, it's like, it's, yeah, yeah it'd be like two eating. You just got to s- ride it out for the most part. It's like right? eating too strong of an edible. Like, yeah. oh, well, okay. You're in it. <laughs> yeah. <it's, laughs> <You're in it. laughs> wait a few hours now. Yeah. yeah. There's Figure not much your you way could, out of it. Yeah. There's not much you could do oh, at that interesting. point. Hmm. I've always, I've, you know, I've never asked you that. I've, I've thought always, about that I've, too. I've, I've thought about it too, where it's like, there's been times where I'm like, damn it. What do I do right now? And uh, chamomile tea is something that I would do at night. Yeah. But I actually would have thought to take like an ashwagandha or would have done something like that to try and mitigate. I don't know how effective it would be. And I also would be worried about, like I said, like a paradoxical effect on the body. I know that, believe it or not, benzos, right? So benzodiapams, I hope I'm saying right, like Xanax, uh-huh. can actually cause these paradoxical opposite effects where someone will take it and get severe anxiety. It's not, it's rare. But it can happen with some people. It can yeah. be quite uh, quite dangerous. So I don't know. But yeah, we're we're working on a supplement together, and I'm I was obviously ignorant to the whole process. Like I, my dream is like I'll just put what I want in there. I want this, this, yeah, this. Yeah, yeah. You know, forget that they're yet to have margins. Oh, yes, and have actually, profits. It tastes yeah. decent. You're yeah. like, yeah, you'll sacrifice this. There's this exotic that. supplement no one's ever heard of. You know, this agreement. But they have to find like the suppliers. We have to. Oh, can we get it in time? Is it going to mix properly? Is it going to taste like garbage? Can you get it organic and purely sourced? Yeah. Like, so we had so. to work around all that, but what we've got coming is going to be, uh, it'll be pretty fun. I, I think that's a mistake a lot of people yeah, think cool. when it comes to supplements. Even when people critique certain supplements, mm-hmm. like, oh, this is whack. It doesn't have this or it's that. It's like, dude, you you can't have your cake and eat too. You can't ask for a product to be $19 mm-hmm. yes. and then you want all these things in it. Or else yeah. what you're probably getting is someone lying to you. Correct. So you have to keep that in, in, into consideration that like these products, when you have all these expensive things inside of it, 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 it should be a, it sh- yeah, it should be a red flag to you if you get it for like Bro, the, also the best price. Do too. you remember that drink? Okay, so in the gym, I don't. They don't even have these anymore, really. Remember in the gyms how they would always have that big fridge with like re- like ready to mix or excuse me, ready to drink mm-hmm. drinks that were in there. Yeah, like the ABB stuff. Yes. Yeah. You guys remember Blue Thunder? Yeah. Uh-huh. That had everything in it. You look at the back, like, oh my God, it's got everything. Like it's got it's got nothing. It's got a little bit of everything, a lot of caffeine. Yeah, is what right. it's got. Yeah. But I remember drinking that as a kid because I was like, 
I've read about all these supplements. It must be awesome, you know, but not really. Anyway, speaking of blue, uh, I watched. Did you guys watch the? Oh, you did with me the trailer for Avatar. 2? Yes, yeah. Have you, you didn't see it, huh? I uh-huh. didn't see it. It looks. Uh, it's gonna be visually awesome. Well, it's, yeah, like very visual driven, which was the yeah. first one was very much like a. I mean, it'll be cool to like. You'll have to see it in the theater to really get the full experience, like an IMAX or yeah. something, uh, or maybe like like in a VR situation. I don't know, like something like with emphasis, yeah, immersive because it's honestly the the storyline. We'll see how it all plays out. I'm judging early, Dude. but it just well, like doesn't look like it's all that. I mean, uh, I haven't seen anything, so I'm I'm just gonna make a prediction that it'll be flat in comparison, just because Avatar was such a big deal because of because of the the visual effects at the time. Yeah. yeah. And it, the imagination that went into it. That's too. right. A whole new yeah, world. The, the, and... the, the storyline was creative. Yeah. It was it, it was the the effects that they did like they killed it and it was so new. So unless they have some new effects that are going to blow you away, it's going to be hard to rival. Yeah, that's true. The yeah, original. and I'm team human, dude. We talked about Bro. this. Like the, the guy sells out the human race for these blue alien <laughs> Get some blue alien tang, basically. That, it's, uh, why didn't anybody <laughs> saw the whole that? human race okay, so out? I didn't like the first one. I liked the first one, but I also didn't like it because, yeah, I know the freaking humans on there are exploiting the planet and they're all bad people. Or whatever. It's your, it's still your humans, bro. Just because you want to bang <laughs> your blue you. chick, yeah, you left your human. You, you fought and killed all yeah. the humans over there. I was like, dude, what a traitor. Yeah. It was terrible. It had yeah. some political undertones in it, for of sure. Of course. Well, it's very you... environmental, <clears throat> like, driven storyline. Well, yeah. speaking, of, since you guys are going to go controversial stuff, I may as well oh, here we drop go. this. Uh, so I wanted to I wanted to talk to you guys about the six-year-old that ran the marathon. There's a lot of heat uh, uh, around it. Like, a lot of people... Like, and, shouldn't be doing that? Yeah, it, even it, it, definitely in the fitness community, too. There's a lot of people posting about it and saying that it's irresponsible. I don't know, man. There's and, some six-year-olds who make a lot of electronics overseas. They work really hard, so I got some crazy stamina. Like, no, I'm just kidding. <laughs> <laughs> I'm, I'm just I mean, so, I, mean I, have, I, I have mixed feelings on it, right? So I think my, I, I know my initial knee-jerk reaction, uh, because I know that we're always, like, trying to get people to, like, calm down with like the extreme running yeah. stuff so my my initial knee-jerk reaction is like oh great you're you're getting this kid at six years old to adopt these behaviors early yeah. and mm. i'm sure this kid's gonna get extreme later and so that's my knee-jerk reaction and then i kind of settled down a little bit and read the way the article was written and it says that the it's not like the parents persuaded or forced the kid to run the kid wanted to and then i started to think okay I don't know what mom and dad do, but I would imagine that, you know, my son's going to grow up watching his mom and dad play basketball all the time. And at a very young age, Mm -hmm. five or six, is probably going to want to pick up a basketball and throw it around because you see mom and dad do that all the time. So if mom and dad are these like big time marathon runners and it's a passion of theirs and they incorporate as a family thing. It's not weird to me to think that you have a child who's six years old who has been doing maybe some of the runs with them and says, I really want to do this with you. And then what do you do as a parent in that situation? Yeah. What was it that Tommy, well, I forget his last name, the, the mountain climber guy? Um, Caldwell. Caldwell. That, um, I mean, his parents, right, were like always taking one of these like crazy climbs and things and like crossing over uh cliffs and like like re- like he was just used to like being around that environment yep. which you know made it so it was just like it just seemed like a natural progression sometimes for- kids um have such a deep like I- immediate crazy passion for something yeah that i think you can definitely you don't, you don't want to push them too hard but if they love it and you monitor them I think it's okay. I mean, a marathon sounds extreme to me, right? But I'm trying trying to imagine if I had a six year old who was like, "Please let me do it. I really want to do yeah, it. I, I love it." It'd I'd be, be like, hard to say. No. I'd be like, okay, I'm gonna run with you. Yeah. I'm gonna keep an eye on you, and then see how you. So doing. the the critics I saw were saying things that the the kid actually struggled to finish it. So I now I don't know how much truth well, it is. I don't know what the definition of struggle looks yeah. like. You know what I'm saying? Like, does that mean? It, I mean, it's hard. It's hard for anybody to run. Yeah. I'm like, what, what point does that? Right. Bring and, up? and and is and is and we are like, what level of, of struggle? It's struggle. Bro, I've yeah. seen I've seen adults run marathons that was real dangerous. I well, that. yeah. No, I've seen adults have to crawl over finish lines. They poop their pants. They yeah. yeah they bleed. Like, yeah. Yeah. So we crazy seen, stuff happens. So I mean, I think that's where the the critics are coming from is that it is a very extreme version of that sport, and it's like. You know, maybe the more responsible thing to do would have been to 
run a half marathon or do some like 5k oh, 10K okay. type yeah. stuff. So I'm like new to this whole article cause you guys read it. I didn't, I didn't know much about it, but, uh, so this was like this was zero to, I just want to do this marathon. Probably not. There's no way the kid would even be able to do it if they didn't run a lot. Well, that's what I'm wondering. Yeah. I don't know. So it didn't go into detail about like the kids training leading up to that, which we don't know. Right. Yeah. Which is also why I think it got a lot of criticism is cause you're, you're right. The, we, what we don't know very well could have happened is, the mom and dad have been running with this kid for the last year and a yeah. half and training up to that. And then the kid was look, conditioned to handle that. Yeah. I look, know. I, you know, when you look at some of these phenoms, uh, mm -hmm. these, these athletes that grow up and just are incredible, like uh, the, the Williams sisters yeah. or um, Tiger Woods, Tiger Woods yeah. what you have is a combination of a kid that has incredible passion for whatever it is they love it they just mm -hmm. and if anybody, singularly focused on this yes thing. and anybody who has kids like you you know this like sometimes they'll get into something and it's like you it's like they're so into it it's insane my son when he was little my oldest he was so into thomas the train <laughs> like it was insane he could tell you he named every single one he could tell you their stories it was it was wild and i didn't have to push him to do it so you have these kids that are super 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 passionate and then you have parents that encourage it, take them to practice, and then you develop into these, you know, extreme athletes. I don't know. It would depend on the situation. Like, if I had a six-year-old that was like, Dad, please, like, oh, it's my favorite thing. I love it so much. And I could see the joy in them. Then what I would do is I would try to be like, all right, let's make sure that that they don't hurt themselves and they do this kind of the right way. I wouldn't try to push them. Mm -hmm. So I don't know what the situation yeah, is. Yeah, it's hard because yeah. the things that we're all bringing up as examples, um, although they're related and they're similar – they're still they're a little bit different like as far as the extreme of it right like marathon running is pretty extreme like playing basketball like crazy for a, a long period of time or being into thomas the train like radically or even playing another sport is you know, soccer football yeah. for hours on hours and being all into it is a little different than pushing yourself for 26 miles straight so I think that's where the controversy is lying. It's like nobody's mm. nobody's nobody's saying anything about the Serene sister, the the uh, the Williams sisters playing tennis, you know, till midnight every night with their dad and doing. I mean, you guys, which watch is extreme, it. yeah, very extreme, very very extreme. But is it as extreme as running twenty six miles straight? I don't know. I mean, how long does it take them to do it? Four hours? Yeah, I don't know. So I mean, those those Not girls were playing longer yeah. than that. You think so? Yeah. Well, it's a what's a twenty six well, miles. How long? How long? Was I did. Uh, let's see. You ran. I ran a half marathon and it you, took, did you really? Yeah, I did. Wow. Yeah, I know. Believe like, it or not, like when you're 16 or something. No, no. This oh. was when I was in my. Uh, Can you tell the audience about your running uh, your running deal the other day. Oh my god. <laughs> yeah. <I> gotta, <laughs> Can you know sell, what? Can I sell you out? Dude, yes, please. It's all right because you're on the same boat. <laughs> uh, you know, if, if you don't pra hey, if you don't practice a skill, you lose it. We had such an old man conversation off air the other day. I so never so run, so right? <laughs> I, I don't run. I stand my ground. No, I never run. And I was taking mail across the street. There's like a mail place across the street from the studio. And I was walking <laughs> across and cars were coming. Yeah. So I like ran across. And I was like... As I'm doing it, I'm like, I don't know how to run anymore. <laughs> <laughs> oh, My body yeah. isn't responding. Like, oh, that feels weird. <laughs> yeah. oh, if I push too hard, <laughs> something's going to break. <laughs> oh, yeah, so I'm going to start incorporating a little bit of running because I don't want to forget how to run. You know, I don't want my body to like, forget yeah, how to do it. Yeah. So. No, that's how the conversation started. And then I was like, dude, I, you know, okay, so I'm not that bad. But what I have felt these moments where I have like started to run. And I know I have at least another two or three gears. But I'm afraid. <laughs> yeah. I'm afraid just because I know my like my size right now. I know my size, my condition, and it's like I've got the muscle and power to propel myself forward, but I don't know if I have the elasticity and the ability <laughs> to like let the rest of my muscles to keep up. And so it's just screams like you're going to tear something. Yeah. So I feel like I'm like, that's so bad. It's I'm a like, skill. You don't, you don't do it. You for, your body forgets. Yeah. yeah, yeah it's a bottom. Yeah. Anything you it don't does do. Make me, that conversation makes me want to incorporate sprints because even when I do cardio, it's like, you know, when I do like my mile thing, just to make sure I can still run a mile. Yeah. I'm, I'm doing it like you're a, just cruising. Yeah. I'm cruising. I'm not like sprinting the mile. Like, yeah. So I haven't done sprints. You know, it's you know, funny too, is that in my mind, I'm like, well, no, I can sprint because, you know, I've done sprints uphill and stuff like that. And I'm like, wait a minute. When's the last time I did that? Yeah. It was a long time ago. It's like every weekend where you're a basketball player or any, like I always see like this happen all the time. Like the first like shot or like move they make is like, yeah, <laughs> <laughs> it's like so awful, dude. I know. Yeah. Dude. You have to you have to keep practicing it, man, you, or you lose it all. You lose it, bro. You completely lose it. So I, I can I you know. So I'm gonna start doing it again, just so like I mean, look, I, I did jujitsu for a long time. 
if I lay on my back on the ground, and I did this the other day with my son, I was like picking him up on my feet and playing with him. Man, I was really good off my back. I could play the guard real well, spider guard and De La Riva and X, you know, guard. And I had him on my on my back. I'm like, oh, this is uncomfortable because I haven't done it in a long time. <laughs> this toddler's too much for me. Yeah, I didn't have the like dexterity, you know. I'm like, oh, what the hell's going on here, dude? I mean, you know what, too? It has to, it probably feels exaggerated for you right now because you're at some of your biggest right now as far as muscle wise, too. I'm, well, not weight, but yes. Muscle. Yeah, not yeah, weight, but yeah. muscle wise. I'm only two, like, two. 13 to 14. I've yeah. weighed a lot. <laughs> I've yeah, been, yeah. But you're, you're lean at 2. Th- I yeah. mean, you're you're lean and muscular right now. So you have a very and that's kind of like I'm I'm definitely my athletic body is like 190 205. Really? Yeah. yeah. And I'm walking you're around 230, right? Yeah, 225 230. So I know and and I'm not training that. So it's not like I can't get in that condition. It's, you're in a different body and you haven't practiced. Yeah, it. it's yeah. like screams like I'll hurt myself. Yeah, my athletic it. body is like uh like 180 like 187, you know, something like that. That's where I feel really good when I was grappling. Yeah. Mm. So I'm like, well, Jesus, I'm like 30 pounds heavier. What about you, Justin? Like What's your two, athletic body? 210, probably. Really? Yeah. What are you 275 right now? At least. <laughs> no. 280. Shut up, bro. <laughs> No, you are you are you even you're not even. No, are I'm you, like two twenty five, maybe. You're a good way right now. Yeah, like I, I mean, I've definitely I haven't weighed myself in a long time, but I'm so I'm, thick. I the, the thickness yeah, is still there. Yeah, it's like I'll I'll usually waver if I'm at my heavy point. I'm usually two thirty five, two thirty, and then I when I start feeling good, I know I'm around like you know two twenty ish, like mm. something like that. So. Mm. Yeah, that's that's. But hilarious. yeah, two ten would be ideal because then I don't run flat footed anymore. It's like then I'm finally like up on you know the four foot and I'm actually uh, a lot more athletic in my moves. Otherwise, I'm just like stomping around all heavy. That's me in the morning when I wake up. Yeah. <laughs> just yeah. like, dude, you're loud as fuck. Stop it. <laughs> you know, I'm like, boof, boof, boof. Yeah. I did my questions today and somebody asked like, if we can do mu- any of us could do a muscle up. Yeah, fuck no, a muscle up. <laughs> <laughs> I used to be able to do those, but yeah. Yeah. really, but who cares? Yeah. Yeah. No, dude, muscle up, bro. <laughs> I can do a pull up. <laughs> I can do a push up. Yeah. Yeah. Does that count? You combine the two? I mean, I haven't had to jump over any concrete walls anytime recently. Yeah. So no, I mean the goal. Me I mean, honestly, yeah, the goal for getting over fences. Yeah, yeah. I mean, yeah. running from cops. Yeah, running from cops. <laughs> yeah, it's, it's a good skill to have. Yeah, no, the goal is like health. I like in the, in the mental effects. Really, I just like longevity and mental effects right now because my focus is there. It's L- not necessarily listen. The truth. The truth is this. This is what happens. I know. Right now. We, I know we're probably gonna get all kinds of criticism about what we sound like, but we're just honest. Yeah, the, the reality is that you, you're going to go through these different seasons of your life, and I know myself too. I know I'm going to get on a kick where I'm going to want to look a certain way, or I'm going to want to move a certain yeah. way, and that that's what I love. And I think <clears throat> I think you have to be flexible with those journeys and seasons through your life to be able to make it a lifelong pursuit. A hundred percent. If you're, if you're, what are you going to be? Max, make it interesting. If you be max performance your yeah, whole life. If you're super mm. focused on, on, on one aspect of training all the time. And, and even if you crush it and you're great at it, like it's all, you're all about looks or you're all about performance. Or you're all about lifting heavy or yep. you're all about your sport. Like, you know, that, that stuff eventually wears that de- on anybody. I don't mm-hmm. care who you are eventually like you will move out of that season of your life. And if you were so married to only that way of training, you're going to have a really hard time adapting to the di- the new season of your life. Like mm. somebody was just asked me that about also on my questions about, you know, does my training look like what it looked like, or does my training look anything uh, like what it used to look like when I was competing to now when I have a son? I'm like, oh my God, no, it's like nothing like that right yeah. now. It's totally different, but I could still maintain a very fit and healthy physique, sure. but it's different. Yeah. I, like my goals are different and I'm okay with that. And it doesn't mean that I won't maybe get a kick, you know, down the road where totally. I want to do that. And maybe my son gets a little older and he starts getting into lifting and then I, it kind of lights a fire for me. It's to always something. there, which is cool. Yeah. And you can all, you can, you can always mm-hmm. get that back and, and, or whatever that pursuit is. But I think that's what happens is I think so many people, they identify with a modality, a way of training that they think is like, oh, this is me. No, you know if you want, saying? if you this want my identity, you want only. a lifelong relationship with exercise, it has to improve the quality of your life. And it depends on the context of the of your life in the moment. Do I need stress relief? Do I need uh, mental effects? Oh, is it a time now to go for PRs or maximum performance? You know, oh, I got a lot of stress right now. Maybe this is something just to keep me, you know, going so the stress doesn't overwhelm me. If you do that with fitness, you have a lifelong pursuit. If you don't, and you do what you said, what people say, you know, what you were talking about, where you're like, I'm always going to be super performance guy. You're screwed. 
Mm-hmm. You're screwed because something in life is going to happen, and then that's not going to happen, and it's going to crush you. And you're either going to give up, which yeah. is what a lot of people do. Yeah. If I can't be the maximum fitness, I'm not going to work out anymore. Or you're going to hurt yourself yeah. because you're so hard headed about it. It's like the know? ultimate ultimatum. You know? it's yeah, like, I have to do this or I'm done. Yeah. Stupid. Well, it wasn't that long ago where I had somebody on Instagram that you know hit their handle was like you know eat, lift, run, some shit like that. Oh, like, lift, run, bang. Yeah. yeah, no, it wasn't that guy. It was somebody uh, else. That I, was, had, like, I wanted a to pick on like that. Man, their profile was like <laughs> no days off and stuff like that. And they were making a comment about something that I had said on the podcast and saying something about how I make excuses about uh, oh, my workout routine and stuff like that. That's so, how you know that somebody doesn't have a lot of exercise wisdom. Well, I mean, it's like, you, you know, is that how you look at that? Like, you look at my my journey of sharing with the audience of, like, where I'm per- personally at and how I'm lifting as an excuse, like, because I'm not pursuing this this one way of training or I'm not lifting seven yeah. days a week. Like, man, you, you've you definitely got a lot. And it was a trainer, right? So it was somebody who was, like, a new trainer, Who's like still in it? And they're in that phase of their where it's like it's new. They are yeah. training seven days yeah. a week, and it's so like it's all about discipline and consistency. And it's yeah. like that's their messaging. That Hardcore. Yeah, yeah, it's like or die. It's like yeah, I, yeah, I remember that too, kid. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I, remember, I remember thinking that's what it that's was like. Cute, like, noob. Hey, speaking of kids, did I show you guys? I gotta pull this up. Did I show tell you guys the latest statistics on um, like how much sex kids are not having these days? Oh. I say kids. It's actually not kids. Yeah, Check. Yeah. So I've seen this stat. It was young the, adults. It was, bro, this was in the Washington Post. It was in the book, um, the one that was written by uh, Gene Torre, I think. Um, oh, I know what you're talking about. It was like a, a uh, I, I plug or iGen. 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 iGen is the book, and they went, I love that book because it went over all kinds of studies and stats. And I remember reading this one, and I was like, oh, that's well, this wild. is weird. So this was a general social survey. This was in the Washington Post. So this is the share of men under age 30, so we're not talking about kids, under 30, who report zero female sex partners since they turned 18, okay? So from 18 to 30, so that's 12 years, okay? 27%. No way. 27. Almost a quarter of men between 18 and 30 are not having sex? Haven't had a single female partner, sexual partner. Okay, you want to know what that number was back when we were, when <laughs> we were kids? You're still jerking off. Yeah, <laughs> yeah dude. dude, that's you know, happening. You know what that number was when we were kids? Like seven to like twelve percent. Are you reading that right? That's what it says. So, I, I mean, am I, and am I interpreting that correct? That, yes. I mean, you're basically saying that men between the ages of eighteen and thirty right now, the share that, of men that uh, almost a quarter of them, more than a quarter. Oh, 27%. Oh, 27. They said 22. No, 27. More than a quarter of them are, zero are having female zero sex. sex. Yes, since they turned 18. Yep. Now, now let's. Uh, Is I'd like that to, many virgins out there? That's interesting. I don't know if they're virgins, but it's just they're not having sex at all. Oh. So, I, spec, I mean, we could speculate. I have my theory. and I, I have a real strong theory on this. I think pornography has really caused some serious damage. I really, really do. I think it's... Uh, well, the book iGen got into some of the things and they attributed it. I, I wish I remember all the things. I do remember one uh, right off the top of my head. One of the things is just simply uh, living at home longer too. Mm. So, I mean, it's kind of hard to go have sex. Yeah, when you bring, live, bring somebody back. Yeah, yeah, when you live with mom and dad still and you're 26. Does that stop you guys? No. It, it stopped me. <laughs> I didn't... Yeah, I wasn't having Oh, yeah, sex. you were a virgin for a long time. Yeah, yeah. So, well, you did a lot of other stuff though. Yeah. <laughs> yes, that's, that's <laughs> you did, I mean, well, I mean... That's very sneaky... But I mean, <laughs> you, that, that was like the classic uh, Christian. Like we didn't have sex. But <laughs> we did everything. Everything else. else yeah. <laughs> Heavy petting. <laughs> yeah. uh, no. So there, there was a, there was a couple other things. I wish I remember all of them, but I do remember that was one of them. Was like the kids aren't leaving home either till yeah. till way later. Um, I think that the information around getting someone pregnant and STDs and stuff like that is more prevalent now than it was before too. So I think that I I, I don't you, disagree with the porn thing. I think pornography's had a huge impact. I think it's, well, I just think it's a lot of these. Okay, things. then what do you guys think about? So I just read this article about a Utah uh, college. I think it's Westminster. I think that's what it was called. But the college has a course they created on the art of pornography. Huh? Why? Why? Like I bet so, that cl- class is full too. Yeah, right. It's I mean, like you would, I would have taken it. Come on, I'm an easy A. It's just <laughs> yeah, yeah. How do, do you your homework, teach okay. that? Like, and so they literally were saying that they watch it in class and then they pick it apart based on the cinematography or whatever, what? like artistic angle they can first find of all, from this. First of all, I could not imagine being college aged and being in a classroom with women. So you got girls yeah. and guys in there, and we're all watching porn. 
yeah. and talking about it. That's <laughs> you're like, yeah. right. If yeah. my kid signs up for that, I'm like, no, yeah. no, you're not doing that. No, I, I think it's had a, a profound impact on culture. Oh, you know, another one they yeah, attribute to is also just online dating in general. Yeah. At that like they don't meet in person. Yeah, that stalls a lot of people. Yes, they, they, because you can. You know, oh no, there's no. Oh, they, this doesn't match. This doesn't match. This. Doesn't well, match. you would think you would. It would be more sex because of the opportunities. Well, yeah, you would. You can think, find what's wrong with them right away. That's why. Yeah. That's and that's what they're saying is that you. So you would think that there's more success, but and and there are a lot of people that find marriage and stuff like that from online dating, but it's it's easier to just oh uh, like okay. If you meet someone right like in like our time, you see them, you're initially attracted, you go over, say hi, yeah. and that's enough to take the have the courage to say, Can I take you on a date or whatever? And then you go find out about them on the date and you go and maybe you, you end up having things you like, you don't like. But the online you're like, dating, I'm already here. Well the uh, <laughs> <laughs> I've paid for dinner. I mean, <laughs> yeah. She's got weird thumbs. But though. online oh, dating, yeah. you know, you have you have these kids that they've decided that, you know, I want this, I want this, I want this, I want this, I want that. And then they're going through and it's like, oh she's got that. She's no. got oh she doesn't have so that. here's so, so they, here's why I think it was I think pornography plays the biggest role. It, it, historically, it's been the men have always been the pursuers. Okay, this is just it's not this is true. Men have been the pursuers. Male um, erectile dysfunction in young men exploded. Did not exist before. It almost didn't exist in in men in their twenties. Imploded actually. It is. <laughs> it's gone through the roof. Lots of these men are reporting that they prefer. Okay, prefer pornography to normal sex Ooh. and that in real life wow. because okay, your brain is quite plastic when you're young I there's, mean, no, there, well, there's no rejection in that well there's it, no like hurt it's also because our brains are pretty plastic anyway when it comes to drugs and pornography pornography affects the brain in very similar ways but when you're younger your brain can actually model itself more than when you're older so in real life you're not aroused you're not as aroused. You can't. You well, don't yeah, get that same it, drive. Think of it how we talk about like uh, the way sugar is, right? Exactly. To, to the addiction in your brain. It's yes. Like, and if you get to a point where you're this person who, who smashes a, a, a bag of candy every single day, and then you ask, so that "Here's person, a bowl of fruit." That's right. And they go eat fruit, and fruit is unbelievably bland. Totally. Because they've con completely reconditioned. It's that. not only that; it's the novelty. It's obviously the unrealistic expectations. Well, you know, this girl, she's not, she's not down to freaking yeah, whatever. She's 18, weird 19 shit. years old, and you think she's going to act like a porn star? Who's yeah, I'll do some weird shit with you, or whatever, yeah. man. It's, it's just, it's ru it's totally ruining situations, and it actually affects the brain in very similar ways to to drugs. Your receptors downregulate. Mm -hmm. Your body try, your brain tries to adapt. And then everything becomes more blunted. So depression goes up, anxiety goes up, uh, sex drive goes down. Um, you're not as uh, aroused or stimulated like you normally would. We're well, supposed um, to learn all those things with your partner, right? Like it, it takes a lot of the mystery out of it. Well, I mean, well, I, this is such a hard one for me to to weigh in on because I never went through a phase where I was like a big pornography guy. Well, okay. we grew up at a time when pornography during those ages, right, where it was like, oh my god, think well, about just, this. Just like, yeah, it was like literally pages out of a magazine a handful of times, but we knew where those pages were yeah. in the woods, and they were the same pages. Yes. Okay. So imagine this. You, that was what porn was. Imagine we're all fifteen. You have an iPhone with access to pornography. Yeah. Okay. Really. You don't think that would could have potentially become a problem? Yeah. I mean, I had I, I had access at one yeah, point. Yeah, it's hard to say. I mean, I, I mean, we we had access by the time we were in our twenties. Yeah, but the, by that point, your your brain has been modeled differently. We've mm -hmm. developed different behaviors. That's fair. Different social interactions. Yeah. I mean, I think that's my point of why I say I have a hard time weighing in on it because, yeah. you know, I I tend to try not to speak on too many things that I don't have any experience yeah. around. And this is an area where I'd never went through a phase of like. Wow, I have to like. Well, I'll, I'll speak temper like this addiction or this or what it could potentially. I mean, I'm the one who openly is talking about my kratom and caffeine thing that I'm going yeah. through. Like I would share with the audience if there was ever a time in my life where I felt like, man, I have a hard time. Well, so I, I went, so I completely abstinent with any, and this was just my own personal thing with pornography, with any of that stuff uh, on my own. And what I found was that connection to my spouse increased. Uh, sexual uh, pleasure and desire went through the roof. So it had an effect on me. And I wasn't mm -hmm. like a kid who was, you know, in my room all day long with my phone or with my computer. Mm -hmm. So I can only imagine, it, especially if, think about it, if as a, as a man, as a young man, you're 17 years old or whatever, the uh, like you got to go take a risk to talk to girls and you're going to get rejected oh, yeah. and whatever. Or 
I could go look at you know fifty million videos and you know you get that you know, what do they call the post nut clarity like you're always in that state of mind where <laughs> yeah. you don't want to pursue women and stuff so uh, yeah. and and they're it's impacting marriages it's impacting depression anxiety and it's one of those things I, I that, could see it being problematic and yep. you know and I've myself had had to pull myself away from it just because it was one of those things just like anything else I talk about caffeine is a big one for me yeah. too yeah. it's it's just got a draw where it's like you know if you're working on things or like it, you know like you're just get fixated on on sex and it's available it's just one of those things you're like oh this is as easy as that and it, 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 it does it interrupts like the whole relationship uh conversational uh aspects to it just like you know that that intimacy like somewhat gets Dude, removed you, you're separating um you're separating sex act from connection and from all the other stuff that historically would follow along yeah so it's very much a drug mm. it's very much just the dopamine but without the it, it, oxytocin yeah, it's very similar without the connection without the bonding so it has a, a pretty profound impact. And our brains were not designed to have that kind of novelty. I, I wonder how, how much of an individual variance there is to, from uh, like brain. Because it's not like I haven't like gone through phases where I've tried to, like I've actually tried to like get into porn. Yeah. Like I've actually, oh, let me get into this. Everyone talks about how great it is. <laughs> <laughs> not that great. I'll me. shoot a film. I know. I just, I wait, really. Wait, what do you mean by get into yeah, it? Yeah, I mean, <laughs> you know, like <laughs> that's just never been my thing. I just don't think that it's, it, it doesn't do it from the same way. Yeah. So I'm wondering, is there like, and is there some sort of uh, probably like with anything? Yeah. yeah, like you know how like some people like 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 Katrina's I family like alcohol. Thing. Like they can yeah. all do alcohol. My family, it's like pills and things like that. Yeah. Like so, definitely certain things. Probably, I would think there has something to do with that. Because uh, it's to just, like re a religious home setting, all that. I think that played a factor. Just it being like looked down upon, like the whole time, like the the, the shame so, around yeah, sex. That's what you would think would drive me that way because it was taboo in my house, right? There was something that would be. Yeah, but you developed it without uh, lots of pornography the what you developed it with actually meeting girls talking to right them. it became yeah. a game to get uh yeah like but you developed to all know those, more girls those skills whatever. right you had to take all the risks you had to get it rejected you had yeah. to you know talk to girls and so that's how you developed but i you know because of that chart i was actually reading research on this because now we finally have some research and these these popular pornography sites um are reporting less and less interest in conventional pornography so like normal sex, like <laughs> gets all the weird stuff, <laughs> bro. It's all this weird, which like, goes right back to my, uh, my analogy with the sugar. It's like, you, it gets more extreme. Yeah. Like yeah. you start off with just like one candy or and then the next thing you know, you're eating like the super sweet stuff. And then a next thing you know, you're snorting pixie sticks. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> what, the hell is, what the hell's going on? <sighs> all right. I'm going to, I'm going to make a quick, let's get out of this real yeah, quick. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I didn't even look over at Doug. Right? Doug's one like, of our sponsors just got listed. What, I forgot where, where it was. I'm going to find out uh, the place it was. It was just listed. Oh, Jackie sent that over. Yes. What was um, the title of that? Butcher, Butcher Box, Box. Yes. One of the best places to work. Oh, yeah. cool. Uh, oh, Inc. Best. Uh, so it's Inc.com, Inc.com. Best Workplaces 2022. And Butcher Box made the cut. So apparently it's a great place to work for people. Did you know what? Not to hijack Butcher Box commercial, but Organifi has won that twice also. That's all great. Yeah. yeah. You it's know, so, it's such a. It's so such cool a, to see our partners in the yeah. that a lot of league. People, you know? A lot of people don't know what our process is when we pick partners. It's not like, hey, how much will you pay us? Yeah, we'll do it. It's like, you're interested or we seek them out. Do we like your product? Do we use it? Mm -hmm. Then we got to meet the owners. Do we like them? If we don't like them, I don't care what you're selling. I'm not going to work with it. And then do we go and meet the team? Do we like the team? Ooh, it's a good environment. And ButcherBox has always given us, I mean, just it's just great. Oh, yeah. They over-deliver for us. Over-deliver. It's awesome. Over-deliver. No, no, no. I, I love them. Oh, you know what we should do since you're talking about partners? We should uh, make a correction on something because you did uh, you did fire some people up on the forum about the public goods comment you made. Oh. Did you see that? They said the prices went up there as well, this and that. Yeah. But generally speaking, this is, I still stand by what I said. Generally speaking, subscription services, because they don't have as many middlemen and because they already collect a fee from your subscription, they are more protected from uh, yeah. inflation. It will be a better and option for sure. It's generally speaking. Now, you can go on a, I don't know, on a you know, yeah, Costco could have a specific sale on one product to draw people in or Safeway or whatever. But when you talk across the board, 
subscription services are going to be more resilient. To- well, I think that was the problem they had with that statement you made was that it, generally speaking, in this case, it wasn't true. I think a better way to say it would be this: even with it going up, it's still cheaper than anywhere else. That's what I'm trying yeah, to say. That's what I would say. Yeah, that's because, what I'm trying to say. It's they, still the best option right, their right now. Because response back was like, yeah. you know, the percentage of increase was significant. Yeah. You know, the increase was as much or more than what they see in the grocery stores. But my point that I, when I commented, I said, well, where can you find razor blades for yeah. four dollars anywhere? Yeah, like, yeah, yeah. yeah, it might have went from for two dollars to four dollars or whatever, whatever it was. I don't you know increased that, by. That's it, my point. Like yeah. everything's going to get touched with the supply chain yeah. issues. Everything's going to get touched with inflation. Butcher Box sells meat. Meat is getting hammered right now. But if you look across the board, yes, you could find specific singular sales like the grocery store. Like, oh, you know, uh, ground beef for sale. You know, whatever. But if you look across the board, subscription services are way better uh, suited to weather the storm. Their price is probably going to still go up too. Was it one of you guys that was predicting the me or told me about the, what were they? Somebody predicting? said there was an economist on Twitter. I forgot their name. I follow them, but they said, "Oh, expect uh, red meat to cost five times as much five within times? the next couple of years." Yeah. Holy cow! I know. Yeah, <laughs> we're, <laughs> Literally, we're, we're gonna buy some cows. Well, I mean, I think we're we're finally here, right? We've been we have been going back and forth, and you know, lightly debating uh, the correction or the recession for the last two or three years. And I mean, I think we're officially in it, the beginning of it, at least. Yep. Um, And I think the the stock market obviously points to that. I mean, and the stock market's a good predictor of the future, right? Because that's people uh, putting money in, thinking of what's going to happen. That's right, betting on what's going to happen. So people are pulling out, getting their money out. So with that, almost certain that's going to go that direction. The the estimates I've heard that from the people that I think I respect the most in the space, because obviously there's always alarmist, and there's always other people that are like, oh, it's fine, you know. Uh, ten to thirty percent in real estate. Wow! Over the next, you know, sixteen to twenty. If you're a months. home buyer, that's good. If you're yeah, in the market to buy, potentially, you know, it's gonna it's gonna be an interesting uh, dynamic, right? Cause part of what's gonna cause that because we're still we're still for the the people that are still uh, bullish on the real estate market because it still is moving relatively quick. Is it because the supply is still the low? supply is still low? Yeah. Um, but Nobody's they, building. But they predict. I mean, they are. They but they're just it's slow because of supply and demand stuff and lumber and everything like that. But it's catching up, right? Um, and I I think a good place to watch is Idaho. Um, the all the stuff that I've been watching for the last couple of years. Idaho was building the fastest and was going to catch up to the demand. Oh, I see. So they'll meet, the, they'll meet the demand the best. Yeah. So it, when the correction begins to happen, which I, I believe we're we're starting to see that, um, they, I believe, will, will feel it the most first. And I think that will give you an idea of what the rest of the country will probably look well, like. Well, here's, so here's what I learned. Here's what I learned in 2008 when that happened. Um, I mean, I already owned my home, and so we, we kind of weathered the storm. But I remember 2008 happened, massive crash, and then there were all these investors who had money ready, and they went in and bought all these pri- all these homes at low yeah, prices. I remember that. Yeah. So that would be the position I'd want to be in. Is like, okay, when it hits the bottom, let's go buy things. The interesting sale. part about that is, so the the like I said, the the range is 10 to 30 percent. Ten. The the conservative people are saying we're going to see a 10 percent hit. The more aggressive people are saying we're going to see about a 30 percent hit. You know, say the houses go down 30%, they're still more expensive than what they were just two years ago. That's the part. So when the 08 crash, we saw like 50, yeah, 60% yeah, yeah. Percent reduction. You saw homes cut yeah. in half, you yeah. know, and like lose all kinds. Where that's why, I mean, obviously a lot of people will call this a crash too. I mean, I call it more of a correction probably coming, um, you know, or a mild recession. I don't think it's going to be an 08 crash. So it's gonna it's gonna be a little bit different, and then interest rates will be high. So you, I, I, I don't know if we'll see the same flood of cash buyers like we saw before. Um, I obviously there's people like ourselves that are positioning for this this potential opportunity, but I mean I predict interest rates are gonna be you know six and a half seven percent. Still low historically. Yeah, yeah historically. Yeah. Well, they were like fifteen percent when they when uh, they yeah. fixed inflation in the. In the 80s, which they can't do now, we have too much debt. But no. and I, I'm still standing by my my prediction on the popularity of the 40 year mortgage. I think that is how because even when this recession or correction happens, even if it were to go down 30, percent the a lot of these homes will still be out of reach for a lot of people, and then definitely out of reach if it's at a seven percent interest yeah. rate. Yeah, the interest rates gonna be brutal. And so I think the 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 way to to stimulate. Uh, it again, I think, is going to be the the big push on the forty year mortgage. Mm. So keep kicking I the can can see down that. the road. Nope. I can see that. 
Hey, real quick, uh, go check out Olipop. If you like soda, but you don't like the sugar and the crap that's in it, you'll like Olipop. They taste amazing, but they're actually gut healthy supplements as well. I'm not making this up. It's a soda. It's got 35 calories. It's got very low or no sugar, and it's got compounds in there that help nourish gut health. They also have a variety pack that has different flavors like classic root beer, vintage cola, strawberry vanilla, orange squeeze. They also have a new flavor, tropical punch. I love that. That one's my favorite one. So go check them out. Go to mindpumppartners.com, click on Olipop, and then use the code mindpump to get 20% off plus free shipping on your order. All right, here comes the rest of the show. First question is from Coach Adrianso. What are the best tricep exercises? Tricep exercises. Oh, I just answered this in my questions today. Did you? Yeah, yeah. yeah. One of the shoes. I was the same person. What did you say? Uh, I said dips and in clo- and close grip bench press. Yeah, that was my quick generic answer. Yeah, yeah those you know, good. I remember reading an article when I was a kid. It was Flex Magazine. Mike Matarazzo was on the cover. So he's, he's passed away now. Big, massive arms, and it was like best arm exercise. And in there, I remember them saying the tricep makes up seventy percent of your arm size. And I was like, what? Everybody focuses on the biceps. So I'm going to build up my triceps. But anyway, I had a bunch of exercises and stuff. And I agree with you. I think dips are incredible. Close grip bench press is incredible. No other exercise has ever packed on as much muscle and strength in my triceps as those. And then if I go isolation or single joint, um, I love a good skull crusher and an overhead tricep extension. Those are my favorites. I want, well, let's expand mm-hmm. on that because I want to explain to the – because you, you just kind of went over, grazed over something really quick uh, or glossed over something really quick that I think not, maybe not everybody understands. And I've I've been critiqued before for some reason by some fitness dorks that think that the, <laughs> the, the, the close grip bench press is not a, one of the better exercises for it, and I think you're an idiot if that's the case. Uh, the close grip bench press and the dips, what makes it such a, a powerful, you know, mass building for the tricep is it's a compound movement. Yeah. Mm-hmm. They're both compound movements, which means you can end up loading them way more. Yep. Yeah. What you can do on a dip and a close grip bench press, Anything you're talking, you can load more. Yeah. You'd be that's right. You, size. 200 plus pounds. I can do on those things. Right. So yep. my body weight plus carrying another 25, 30, 40 pound kettlebell underneath me. And then I can do a close grip bench press with 225 yep. plus on there. I mean, if you can get to that place. You can put on it. Seriously, you're not doing a skull. Most people cannot skull crush what they can no. in close bench press. Yeah, they can, no. and and a lot of these idiots that try and make this argument when I make a statement like this is they always refer to the dumbass the muscle yeah, activation shit. EMG which, shows activation or whatever. That doesn't tell you a whole lot. I mean, that tells you something, but it doesn't tell you a whole lot in the real world. These exercises just work. Compound lifts just yeah. do. They're a active, but the force demand isn't quite as substantial. Right? And then, and then so. there's there's still a caveat to all that, right? Which is if you only do close grip bench press and dips all the time, then cold crushers will put on the most mass. Yeah, and also so it, keep that in mind too. And so. also, I'm not saying we're not saying just do those. Right. The answer no, to the question you're, is you're asking the top tier ones. That's it. Yeah. What are the best? Right. So, and you know, here's a tip that will really make a difference with tricep development. If you want to pick a combination of exercises for your triceps, pick them based off of elbow position. Meaning, if I do dips, like body weight dips, that's basically my elbows at my side. Then I want to pick an exercise where my elbows are in front of me. A close grip push up will work, and so will a skull crusher. And then, third, an exercise where my elbows are up by my head. So yeah. I'm doing an overhead tricep extension. That lengthens the triceps in different ways, and it's a different type of tension versus five different versions of press downs where your elbow is at your side every single time or five different ways of doing skull crushers where your elbows yeah. are in the same position. Well, I loved weighted dips and, you know, and that's something I always incorporate, but I also love to really stress them out with instability with the Olympic rings. Oh, and, hell yeah. And the depth that that provides. So the to your only point reason why I don't bring that up low. is that you don't see a lot of the rings or else I would agree with you that yeah. that would drop. I know out. it's not, yeah, it's like, oh, go do some. You yeah. know, it's like, <laughs> not a lot of people are going to pull that off, but uh, they're really challenging but I mean, it's to me, that's like the ultimate of uh, what I've experienced in terms of growth in my tricep. Oh, yeah. It's the, the, the best. And, and here's a good combination exercise if you want to have fun. You could do a skull crusher uh, to a close grip press with your with the same weight. So once you fatigue with your skull crusher, then bring it down the same weight and do close grip. It's a nice combination. Also, when you do a skull crusher, there's a couple different ways to do them. Um, the way I like to do it is I like to not bring the barbell down to my forehead. You like behind your head. I like to bring the elbows back a little bit and get a, 
a, lo- a larger range of motion mm-hmm. and then come up. And then here's the other thing people screw up with the skull crusher. They don't squeeze hard at the top. Let me tell you, you add that hard squeeze at the oh, top. Oh, yeah, that lockout, yeah. Very, Definitely. very different. But, there, I mean, there you go. And I'll tell you what, look, power lifters have some of the big, biggest triceps in the world. And they do some isolation exercise, but a lot of it comes from just bench press. Yeah. Bench press and close Bench grip. will do it. Yeah. yeah. I mean, at one point, I made it like a mission to see how strong I could get on the close grip. I got up to 300 pounds. And my, I mean, I, my triceps always responded well, but I, nothing built my triceps like that. Yeah, nothing came close. Too. Next question is from Lance R. Meyer. I've recently added heavy dumbbell far, farmer carries to my workout. Does adding them to the end of a full body workout make sense as a finisher? I'm a new lifter looking to pack on muscle. I mean, you can do them at the end, but well, the you, beginning. at the beginning, yeah, that's is that, really the beginning. I, so, okay. So it depends on like yeah. how, how I use it. Like. If I was like, uh, like, let's say we're all lifting together and we're like challenging each other, like how much we could carry farmer carries, like I would do it at the end of the workout. But if I was like trying to like, he's like a gasser. Like, yeah, it's like yeah. like trying to gas out, just see what who, how heavy we can get on yeah. it. I wouldn't do that pre workout. Pre, I would be more form technique and trying to like activate everything. Yeah. To prime. That's where I see the most value. With that's what I think yeah. too. So I, so I think that's uh, that matters. And the reason why I want to make that clear is because of course on social media you see a, a lot of people doing stuff like this and, and and a lot of people are always showing off how much weight they can do. And so if you attack it with the idea of I'm going to try and see how heavy I can do these farmer carries. Yeah. Mm-hmm. If that's kind of your way, because and there's there's value in doing that. So I'm not going to say that's bad. But if you're going to do that, I would put the end of the workout. If you were going to do it the way I like to use them, and I think you guys probably use them most of the time, turns everything mm-hmm. on. Yes, yeah. it wakes the entire body up from head to toe. Yeah, I totally agree. Uh, I, I do, however, program it a bit differently with the high school kids, and this is just really to reinforce posture. Uh, after they're in a bit, uh, a, a certain level of fatigue. Oh, I see. So, so you do at the end of the workout. I do it at the end, and and really, like I'm strict with the way their posture and like where they're tight and where they're not, and I'll tell them like as we're going through. Um, but really, it's just to put that load, demand, build volume, work capacity, uh, work capacity, yeah. and 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 also to be able to maintain that position while under fatigue. Well, yeah. you just brought up a good point. That okay, this is where you know again the nuances of training, right? Yeah. Like who this person is. Yeah, if, is this an athlete? Is this just an you know an average gym goer who hears us yeah. talk about the benefits of 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 farmer carries and wants to incorporate it in the workout? Um, you know, or is this like a football kid, like you're saying, or is this a guy who's trying to actually be super strong and doing far? There's, there's a lot of different ways to use it. None of them are wrong. Depending on my desired outcome from it is how I'm going to approach it in the workout. So, I mean, you just brought up a good point on how you, why you would do that. Yeah, when it. you're fatigued, can you maintain posture, you mm-hmm. know, which I think would be important when you're playing football and you're play after play after play, you, your stability goes down, you're going to get hurt. You know, exactly. and that's what happens at the end of the game. I would assume. I've seen, game. yeah, yeah. Personally, I like them at the beginning. If I'm going to do farmer carries, I do them in the beginning. And if I'm going to make them like part of the workout, workout, like when I followed Map Strong, I went heavy. I got up to 455 pound heavy trap bar. Oh, those are far- fun. And my my here's the funny thing. So you'd expect now they're scheduled on the they are off foundational days. Though. Well, so they're called work sessions, right. and the work sessions are hard. <laughs> the harder the workouts. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, but I mean, I think that's important to know because I think would you do that right before you go into like a bench press and a deadlift? Well, so or- it's programmed in there as a foundational exercise because strongman competitions involve yeah. carrying heavy things. Yeah, so I'd they never pro- with it. Yeah, I'd never programmed it like I either programmed it as a way to turn on my CNS or as a way, like you said, to work on my posture, but I'd never made it like a like the exercise of the workout or whatever. With Map Strong, I did, and I had some... Re- I expected my traps and some of my back to develop. Did not expect my biceps to grow, and they did because of the tension of yeah, holding sure. them in that lengthened position. In an isometric position. Oh, my God. And I felt my... Like the day after... You know when you do it... After you work out for a long time, you guys know this, you ever have a workout and the day after you're like, Oh, that made me grow. Like I could tell yeah. that did something. It was like that with those heavy farmer walks, and and they're programmed in that workout. It's that is like the one of the core port parts of that workout is the farmer carries. Yep. Next question is from Billy Zaremski. What's the best way to get your quads engaged if you're having a hard time feeling them when back squatting? Yeah, you know what's funny? Didn't you just get somebody who asked you this the other day? I did. And you know, okay, so there's, well, there's a, a person. Caller, maybe? He was a live caller. He was a live caller, yeah. right? There, well, we were talking about pre-exhausting and all that stuff, but there's a person in this room. dominant, which is like uh, rare, yeah, rare. Well, there's a person in this room that's like that with squats. It's Doug. 
Oh, Doug is all butt me. when he squats, okay. and he's always <laughs> talked about getting. And so, what did we do? We elevated his heels. One of the easiest ways to get your quads yeah. to fire hard with a squat yeah, is, squats. is to put a, a block under your heels because then you get more you get more knee moving more forward, anterior, more, yeah, more driven, of the quads. More force, yeah. You can also the old bodybuilder trick is you put a block under your heels and you get a more narrow stance. Now you're really getting some hard quad activation. Now the tricks that we talked about in the past episode were. Do you know isolation exercises first? So like leg extensions first or sissy squats first. Right. Try and turn them on first. Yeah, but if you're doing squats and you're like, I want to feel some of my quads, elevate your heels, bring your legs closer together, and that's a, a becomes a quad squat. I mean, yeah. you really feel it. You that. could also do I mean, you could do a little bit of an elevated heel with a forward lean in a Bulgarian squat. Oh you know? nasty. Yeah. You get, you know, so so elevate the so obviously Bulgarian squat, your split squat, your split stance. And when you go down, you know, hold the dumbbells, lean your chest over a tiny bit, and the heel is elevated, and you'll. Oh man! You just focus on front squats for quite a while. You Thank know? you. That yeah, too. I was just, just going to say just that. Get focused on that. A lot of people avoid them, like the plague. That's a good point too. I know this person is asking, how do so I get back squat. my quads to fire more on the back squat? But there you go. Like, how about bail just on the back on squat the front? For, you're gonna. It, why not just let go of back? And then, and I do this for a while. Like, there's times mm -hmm. where I'll be on a kick. If I know I've been neglecting the front squat, I'll completely bail on the back squat and not back squat for a while, and only front squat when I squat. Yeah, front squats have to be a real front squat it has to be one of the most underrated or underutilized exercises. It's hard. It's but so functionally driven. Bro, I tell you what, man. Old school, right? Old school bodybuilders used to do back squats and front squats in the workout. That's how they would combine the workout. Back squats, front squats. And I've done that before. <laughs> and that's and brutal. Front squats toast the quads. They hammer the quad, especially, especially if you elevate the heels a little bit. I mean, it mm -hmm. will get those quads on fire especially if you're glute dominant. By the way, this is more rare. It's usually the other way around. Usually people are like, how do I get my glutes to fire more yeah. Yeah. when I squat? But like I said, we did this with Doug recently. He was like, my, my quads, I want to build my quads up. My butt keeps growing. And Adam's like, no, keep the butt growing, man. Was, yeah, yeah. No, but we said, it looks hey, great. Don't looks stop great. the magic, Doug. Yeah, no, but we elevated yeah. his heels and, you know, he, he got some good results from it. That's awesome. Next question is from Spencer Antifave. You guys have shared studies showing that you need way less volume to maintain muscle and strength than to build it. However, I still feel like when I cut volume any more than one half, I lose muscle and strength. What's up with this? Yeah. Well, first of all, cutting your volume in half uh, or up to or even a quarter, that's pretty good cutting volume to not notice those effects. But here's what happens. And I, this used to fool me all the time. And it still can if I take days off. You don't feel as pumped. Yeah. So you mm -hmm. feel smaller. Yeah. Also, strength. Strength is a skill. If you cut your volume down from... A, f a fourth to or a fifth down or you bring it down way down even if you keep the same amount of muscle you're not gonna be as strong because strength is so much of a skill that if you don't practice certain lifts often enough you're just not going to be as strong at them so you know i in in his defense um I really didn't notice this as much until i until i had been lifting for well oh, over a good decade. point so like it it I didn't. I, I probably can totally relate to how he feels right now in the first ten years of lifting because it did feel that way. And That's a good I, point. And I'm sure you're right. Half of it was probably psychological. Mm -hmm. You know, maybe some of it was a little truth that I wasn't being. I wasn't able to do. It. You know, maybe my training five to seven days a week gave me the illusion that I had more muscle than I even really technically had. Right. Um, so there's probably a lot of factors that were in play, uh, in my first 10 years. It wasn't until I got beyond that first decade that I really start to notice this, that like, and, and I, I used to say this all the time. I mean, Katrina and I have talked about it in just the 13 years we've been together is like, you know, isn't it so cool how we can kind of fall off and not be consistent. And yet our out of shape is better than what our in shape looked 10 years yeah. ago. And that's a testament to all that muscle that we've built over those years, that we've been, it's it'll it'll hang on. I'm man. un I'm yeah. not familiar with any studies that have been done on this. I would love it if there were for someone to share them, but I doubt it. But I 100% believe that the longer you keep muscle, the easier it is to keep muscle. Yeah. So if you've built, if you just built 10 pounds of muscle and then you lost it, you'll gain it back faster. Sounds than like it. a Dr. Andy Galpin study. Totally. Yeah. I was just going to say that. I wonder yeah. if he has. I would have to ask him. I wouldn't be yeah, surprised. That would be a good, you know, and to that point, um, I tell you what, the biggest leap in my entire training career came from my competitive day, the competitive run. 
I had never trained so consistently, put on so much muscle than in those three years. And after those three years, I've like, it was I, easy to keep. Oh up. my God. It's yeah. like, I, I haven't seen under two. I used to struggle right before competing. It was hard to still keep over 200 pounds. Yeah. Uh, on my body, and it's like I can't tell you how hard it would be to get under two hundred. Yeah, being able to prove muscle memory, right? Yep. So yep. I mean, it's it's all factors in, but uh, yeah, I I'd, I'd be interested to see if if that study exists. I, I mean, it's kind I, of I really obvious, think it, right? I think it, it so. seems obvious. Yeah, you know? I mean, everything from a, from a CNS to also the total amount of muscle that you've built, like the, if from doing the more time under the iron that you have placed and years of training and hanging and keeping muscle and being consistent with it. I think the easier it is going to be. Yeah, if so, you're a relatively new lifter and you hear us say that and it's like, bro, you've only been lifting for a couple of years. Like, In other words, like if you gain 10 pounds and, then, and it takes you a year to gain it and you lose it, you'll gain it back way faster the second time around. However, if you gain 10 pounds and keep that 10 pounds for 10 years, yeah. I bet you you lose it way slower. Yeah, it's like hardwired. It's like a part of who you are. And yeah. I 100% look. Well, who's I, another good uh, example? Remember Pekulski? Oh yeah, yeah. he perfect. had to try, try trying to lose. Perfect example. I mean, yeah. Guy had trained so hard, so consistently for so many decades, and I remember the first time we were talking to him off air, and he was just like, "Bro, he's like, I'm trying to lose 100 pounds." <laughs> he's right like, now. "I'm trying to be a yogi." Yeah, he's right like, I'm like, eating what? once a day. Yeah. I'm like walking all the time. I'm barely lifting. Like, and that guy couldn't lose mu couldn't try couldn't lose it's, muscle. He tried. It's stuck I on him. So, I I remember when I met an old, it was like an 82 year old uh, man. This is when I had my studio, and he was eating breakfast next door. He should be next to a breakfast place. And he walked in because he saw the kettlebells and he lifted it up. He started messing around with them. And I said, hey, you like these? You know, and I started talking to him. I thought he'd be a client maybe. And he go, and he had a Russian accent. And I and he goes, I used to, you know, lift with these all the time. And I looked at him and he's got, had these like, and he was like 80, I asked him his age. So that's why I know. He had these meaty ass forearms. I'm like, you train with kettlebells? And he goes, yeah, in Russia. And he goes, I used to compete uh, for the Soviet Union. Uh, so he was an Olympic lifter. And I'm like, do you work, like, how often do you work out now? He's like, I never work out. I haven't worked out for decades. And he looked at this guy's forearms. And it was like, <laughs> that's stuck. Yeah. It ain't going well, anywhere. Well, think about it. Our bodies, are, our bodies are adaptation machines. And if you have trained for decades. It just sends it, a signal. Yeah. It, well, it thinks, even if you took two, three years off of no lifting, it still thinks it's going to get more of that because it's 10 years totally. of lifting only three years off. Totally. Yeah. It still is adapted for that 10 years because it's still the bulk of what you've done over the last 13 years. Yep. So you got to think the, the longer you have consistently trained, I think that that has to apply. And if you're a relatively new lifter who just started lifting for a year or two and you put your first five or 10 pounds of muscle mm -hmm. on, and then you hear us go, Oh, you only have to train one day a week to maintain that. And you lose, it drops off. I, I and I agree with you. You get it back. If you were, to pick the volume back up, but I'm sure that that factor plays. Well, in. what do bodybuilders call it? Muscle maturity. Yeah. You know, they have competitive have competitive bodybuilders that hit the stage and they're huge and they're ripped, but they don't look the same as the more seasoned bodybuilders. And they say, oh, you got you got to you got to be training more for that muscle maturity, which is a weird term, but they're talking about the quality of the look to muscle. Um, so yeah, and you know what's funny? This is quite unique to strength training. Other forms of exercise don't quite produce. This kind of, you know, dare I say, permanent type of result. Like you lift weights, you build muscle and strength. And the beauty of it is if you do it decade after decade after decade, as you get older, it gets easier to keep. Like other forms of exercise don't quite have that quality, which makes strength training a very, very attractive form of exercise for long term success, for long longevity. Look, if you like our podcast, you got to go to mindpumpfree.com and check out our guides. We have guides that can help you with almost any health or fitness goal. You can also find all of us on social media. So Justin is on Instagram at Mind Pump Justin. Adam is on Instagram at Mind Pump Adam. And you can find me on Twitter at Mind Pump Sal.